Hello everybody. Today I have the age-old question of does size matter? And you are watching Oakland Tobacconist. Gauges. Let's talk cigar gauges. I wanted to go over uh, a particular review and uh, conversation about cigar ring gauge. I'm going to be smoking for this video the Whiskey Rebellion Petite Corona. This is a slightly um, brushed foot or unfinished foot, I would like to say. This is a 4x46 Petite Corona, very thin gauge, very small cigar. Does that affect the taste of the cigar itself? We're going to find that out. And a light, and we're going to go ahead and see. I'm going to go ahead and light this up. As I say, it's slightly unfinished foot, so it's not necessarily a brushed foot. That meaning that the uh, the wrapper leaf itself does not go all the way to the bottom of the cigar. I'm going to be tasting first the binder and filler, and then we're going to get into the wrapper leaf as it continues on. So right out the gate, I'm hit with a lot of flavor, quite a bit of pepper, quite a bit of heat, but that's because of how close it is right to my uh, palate. I'm also getting more of a hay note, I'm not gonna say grass, but like an earthy hay note. Um, so there we are on the start. Now, I bring this up, the question of gauges, because there are so many different gauge cigars. In fact, the three most popular sizes within the American market is the Robusto, 5 inch by 50 gauge, Toro typically around the 6 inch by 50 gauge, and finally Gordo, a 6 inch by 60 gauge. You're going to have to wonder after a while, does that play a part in the blend itself? You're having more of the filler tobacco within a 60 gauge cigar versus less filler within something like a 46 gauge. Does that affect the situation? Now, before we even get into a conversation about does gauge matter, does gauge change the flavor, or does the size matter, we have to first see does the components matter? If you're using particular tobaccos in your filler or on the binder or the wrapper, how much is playing a role over the other? So first, the conversation that normally is brought up, how much of a role does the wrapper leaf play on the cigar itself? I am one who believes that at least 60% of the flavor you're getting from the cigar is from the wrapper itself. Certain manufacturers even told me, hey, take off some of the wrapper and see how the cigar smokes differently. But a very good example is of something that is barely a closed foot like this, or a brush foot or shaggy foot, you can taste the fillers in the binder at play at work, and then how does that change when you get into the smoking of the wrapper leaf? Sometimes I've even had cigars I've enjoyed so much just off a of binder and filler before it's gotten to the wrapper leaf that it makes me more excited as it's going to burn further, what's it gonna taste like because it can only get better from there. If you're like myself, you do subscribe to the belief that the wrapper leaf takes up a lot of the flavor in the cigar that you're smoking. Once we have established that, then we can move on to different ring gauges. As I say, this is a 46 gauge. I have with me the counterpart to the Whiskey Rebellion. This is a six and a half by 54 Bellicoso, or some would say Torpedo, but more Bellicoso, also a unfinished foot. So you can see the difference. That means that we're gonna be smoking the interpretation of the cigar into two different sizes. You can see the cigar length difference, the gauge difference. How is this going to translate comparison to both? And that normally comes out with the fact that you have less filler tobacco to the wrapper ratio. So on something like this, right now I'm getting a dense earthiness, pepper on the retrohale, a bit of bitter chocolate, and almost what I would describe as something like caramel popcorn. It may sound kind of funny, but that's where my mind goes to, a caramel pop, pop, popcorn flavor. It is gonna be very different when you go to something like the Whiskey Rebellion in the Bellicoso, because a lot of those flavors, if I'm getting it off of the wrapper, I'm gonna be having a concentration of that flavor on this cigar because the wrapper is more dominant. You have more of the ratio than something like a 54 gauge on the Bellicoso. Some may have heard of what's called a Lancero or a Corona or a Lonsdale. These are all somewhat longer-ish in length cigars. This is so that the duration of the cigar is not as quick as something like a Petite Corona, 
but also you're getting that concentration of flavor. Some cigar nerds, as they will call themselves, really prefer the Lancero because of that wrapper to filler ratio and because of that long smoke they're gonna get. It's still gonna be an hour to hour plus in duration of smoking, but they're getting more of that rich flavor. Does that mean that you should always be smoking a cigar within a thinner gauge? No, I don't believe so. I state that because I've had certain interpretations, even by a 6x60, that I have enjoyed more than, let's say, like a 5x50. There are certain interpretations of cigars or tobacco that just seems to pop better when it's in a bigger ring gauge. Because of the particular fillers, the ligeros that they're all using within that cigar and that ratio to the wrapper leaf for one way or another, you just it marries perfectly and you're getting a more fleshed out cigar, fleshed out blend. Also, the flip side is no matter if you're smoking a Lancero that's seven inches long and only 38 gauge, 40 gauge, it's probably still not gonna last as long as a 60, six and a half by like 55 gauge, 54 gauge. So if you're one who purchases more on economy or wondering more about the economy of a smoke, maybe a thin ring gauge is not exactly what you're looking for because you want the smoke output and you want the duration behind your cigar. So whether you are one who prefers a cigar that's gonna last 45 minutes like this Petite Corona and you're in, you're in between certain things and you're like, hey, I just want something quick, the concentration of this flavor, the, the, how it works with the fillers inside, you'll get some of those notes. For me, and I don't know if it's just the blend itself, it's easier for me to pick out particular flavor notes on thinner ring gauge cigars because you have the concentration of that tobacco. That's why I can very much see this earth, this hay, this caramel popcorn, this bitter chocolate right off the bat. That's what my brain is going to. And that's where I see sometimes it gets a little muddy in bigger ring gauge cigars. So if you're wanting to, to have a, maybe a quicker smoke or more concentrated flavor or richness of that tobacco, if you're a fan of a wrapper leaf itself, Lanceros are a great place, or Petite Coronas or Corona Largas, they're a great place to gravitate towards because you're gonna get that concentration of flavor. If you're one who's more economy based and you want that smoke output and you want more of a just a strength behind it and don't really care indirectly about the type of wrapper leaf that is on the cigar itself or if that's playing more a dominant role or not, 6x60s, 54 gauge, I've even seen some 70, 80 gauge, they can be advantageous depending on what you prefer. So hopefully that's a bit informative. Hopefully it's helped you out a bit. And if you haven't tried, pick up a pair of cigars, something like the Whiskey Rebellion, or something that you know that uh, you can try in both sizes. And you can, can compare those two and see which you prefer. The flavor and the richness of a thinner ring gauge cigar, or the smoke output in the economy side, and sometimes the boldness of a bigger ring gauge cigar. Hopefully that's helped a bit. Thank you again for joining us, and we will see you soon on Oakland Tobacconist.